getting into that. Welcome. Welcome. I know it's I a know. good beat, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I definitely welcome everyone. For sure. Yeah. Well, look at what we've got here up on the screen. I'm just going to make it, you know, by everyone. We're going to just take a look at this. <laughs> Hannah, what are we looking at? This is, uh, these are the crazy mountains in Montana. And this nice. moment happened when we were very sad because we got to our camp and there was 8 trillion mosquitoes. And so then we had to hike more to try and find more wind. And then we got to this spot and it started pouring down rain and there was no hope of anything fun in sight. So we were just trying to like get in our tent and then the sun broke through the clouds, like suddenly, and this rainbow appeared, and then this second rainbow, and it was this just really incredible moment. Wow. That is absolutely incredible. You guys are so lucky living in, living in God's country out there, like just yeah. amazing. We'll share this out on uh, socials, so wherever you're following the cadence team will share that because hey this is like our whole mountain motif the market marketing all has mountains on purpose and i'm going to keep it that way because i miss mountains yeah. so <laughs> so you guys were there <laughs> last week from just like a few days right yeah monday to wednesday yep good times yeah really yeah. really fun um <clears throat> The crazy mountains are really spectacular. And we had one mm -hmm. rainstorm like that, but we also had some really, really good weather too. So yeah. um, managed to get on top of Conical Peak. And um, yeah, it was, it was really cool. Really, really cool. Yeah, there's like, I could show like pictures and stuff forever because it was just fun. I but... know. <clears throat> Amazing. So I, well, I our dad well, is thanks. 66 Go ahead. and yeah. he was, oh, sorry. our dad is 66 and he was stoked to be able to get on top. It's like his goal every year to get on top of some peak in Montana. So it was fun to get him up there. Yeah, yeah that is so great. So cool. Well, it's uh, rest and rejuvenation that's well-deserved because I know we've all, the whole Cadence team has been working really hard on the marketing side with the sale that's going on right now as well as with the dev team coming up on a pretty major release with Cadence Blocks 3.1. And that is really what we're here to talk about, isn't it, Ben? <laughs> we're here to talk about yep. code and all of the fun stuff that uh, you have coming. Um, do you want to set a frame of like where we're at in terms of the development process? Like how close are we to actually getting Cadence Blocks 3.1? And is it Cadence Box Pro 2.0 out, out the door. Are we within a week, within a couple weeks? Tuesday. We're launching both Tuesday. There you go. So you <laughs> heard it here first. Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. My lead that's marketing person didn't know that, I guess. So that's not good. <laughs> Hopefully your reaction was for this and not because I haven't told you. But you yeah. You have told me. <laughs> You have told me, but I have also been very respectful of let's not make any promises. Let's not yeah. throw any dates out there as much as everybody wants to celebrate next mm -hmm. Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> things can happen and there's lots of moving pieces. And I want to make sure that the dev team is confident so that when they hit go, that you guys are ready. So I'm here yeah. to be of service. Yeah, we're excited to get this out and really excited, like, you know, our mind is already on the next 10 things we're working on in terms of stuff. So mostly this is like just confirming that everything's working like it should, but um, this release has a lot less, uh, less risk involved in terms of like, there's not like a ba lot of backward compatibility issues. Cause we're not doing, we're mostly producing new features in this. So it's like new stuff instead of um, updating and refactoring a lot of old, older, code like we did with 3.0 right right so this is building building a new house on top of a rebuilt foundation yeah yeah right. well more features more rooms yeah. or whatever if you want to use the house analogy yeah <clears throat> and and two like it's just like the beginning like this new form block is going to be 
really exciting to develop a lot more. We started, you know, work on the conditional fields and things like that that are coming, but that's all getting ahead of ourselves. Like that's future, but yeah. it's exciting. cool. Well, do you want to, uh, can I share your screen and maybe we could start looking at some of the new features that are coming in 3.1? Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> under cadence blocks, you're going to notice a new menu item and that's all forms. And what this uh, is, is a place for all the forms that you manage on your website um, to exist. So you can update them here and they will update wherever you've embedded them. So you can create a new form here. Um, and it's going to take you into what is a typical Gutenberg uh, page editing screen. You can give your form. Uh, oh, wow. I didn't know it would do that. That's a bug. It automatically selected if I gave it a title. Okay. I'm going to back out and redo this and then I'll fix that later. Um, so before you give it a title, you can walk through this little wizard, um, which is pretty simple now we're going to do more with this but it's a lot more powerful than what you would see with most because you can go to get your basic layout and then from your layout you can choose a style and there's a couple cool styles we did like an infield style and this is where um, you can set label and description and then create and that is what i mean by infield style the label is looks like it's part of the field which is a common style right now for forms um and in general like it's powerful that you can create forms here and especially that you can manage them here but in general like you're going to be doing this on a new page or in a page or wherever you are so it doesn't you don't need to start there um so if you grab the advanced form block you're going to be given the option to choose a form you've already created or create new. And then you go right into that similar like wizard here where you can, you know, choose to subscribe. And then, um, you know, if you want infield or underline and now you get that form and this form is synced up with that custom post type. So you're, you're working in a custom post type, even though you're in like a page or whatever. Um, which is really cool. So from here, if you look at the thing, you've got the advanced form block. You can put a row into it. So you've got all the row controls that you're like familiar with in terms of like wanting to move stuff around sections. And then inside of those, you've got your um, custom field areas. So you can drop in more fields. We've got advanced fields like uh, file upload and time and date. You got your layout options if you want to use text or add titles and all that kind of stuff to your form dividers. And then you can add CAPTCHA. And with this new CAPTCHA implementation, um, I don't have any API keys in here. You actually can use Turnstyle and HCAPTCHA and version three. So you get a lot of different um, CAPTCHA types built we... right into the form. Is the honeypot that is in the current cadence blocks form, is that also available to the advanced form block? It is not. And I can okay. explain why we took that out. So basically as um, honeypot was always a hack. It was a, it was a kind of like you could hack a way to catch bots and so it was never like a natively supportive way to prevent like spam. Okay. And as browsers have progressed, as autofill has progressed, as like all of the add-ons that you have for like password management and all that stuff, so you're not filling out forms every time, have changed the way that Honeypot works is getting unreliable in okay. terms of it, it creates a weird accessibility... I wouldn't call it an issue, but it's a weird accessibility thing because you're wanting to show that it's there, but also tell accessibility things that it's not. And 
again, so it's, it's hacky. We've had to update the one in the current um, simple form uh, multiple times just to get browsers to stop trying to autofill it, um, especially mobile browsers to try to autofill it. So essentially, it's not a super long-term reliable way to prevent spam. And as we were looking at this one, we were like, we could make it. And yes, it, it kind of works. Um, it's, it's effective at stopping a lot of spam, but not all. It also has potential for a mobile browser to update and then break it because it's not like a technical way to fight spam it's a hack so in doing this we just went away from that as being an option um, mostly because there's not a good perfect way of using something like honeypot um, which to explain that all all that that was is we added an extra field into the form hit it and then bots would come along and fill out your form and they would fill out every field, even the hidden ones. Gotcha. And so that's how that worked. Then we would check, hey, is this field got content in it? And if it does, we would say, hey, this is probably um, spam. So with the new advanced form block, the way that you can extend it is totally different now because it's all dynamic form and it's all stored in a custom post type. So there's a lot more flexibility for people to be like, I want to write my own honeypot. You could just do that and hook it in and run it if you're like really into the different honeypot techniques. But in general, there's just not a good reliable way to do okay. that kind of a spam fighting. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for humoring, humoring my question because I was like, <laughs> where's the honey? There's no honeypot yeah. here because I had been yeah. using that on the other block. Yeah, and we, we've we like had to fight a lot to make it work. Safari did an update where it started messing with the honeypot. So it's like one of those things where even in the previous one, we're dumbing it down so we don't catch people accidentally. Like we're making okay. it intentionally less effective because the way that autofill is working, it's um, it's got the potential to fill out these hidden fields because it's, it's always been a, you know, kind of a hack. Okay. So. All right, cool. Yeah. And Peter's saying that other honeypot solutions and other premium form plugins never did anything for him. So, uh, so now, yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> and the, rec the was so yeah, my recommendation would be turnstile um, is where I keep kind of landing. Obviously, Captures good. Um, you know, those are the, they're annoying in terms of like, I'll me back up. They're, they're annoying in terms of like, they're in the, the interface of the user and using version three of um, Google captcha is just, you need to load it on every, like you need to load that script all over your site to make it more effective. And even then, like I've noticed that version three has a tendency to catch more real people. Um, certainly where version two is like pretty consistent. And like, if you're a real person, you can get through, although it's, it is frictionless. So there's a trade off there. I think where I would suggest is if you're using Cloudflare, start there with browser integrity and some of the, tools that you can use right from the get-go to stop spam from even hitting that page. So like we have, you know, on the Cadence website, we have a really intense uh, page setting for the login page, mostly because, you know, you've seen it. If you logged into our site recently, if you go to the my account page, it's literally going to load Cloudflare for a second, make sure that you're not a bot and then put you on the page. And it's annoying I wouldn't do that on a contact page. We're doing it on my account page because we tend to get a lot of attacks on that page. And this is like the cleanest and easiest way to like shut it all down. Yeah. Um, so there's trade-offs everywhere you go with blocking spam. I mean, spam is so annoying um, and frustrating. And um, there's even other tools. AskMet is still really good. We're, we're, look, we're working on an integration with that for a future version of, 
um, the advanced form, that's just, you got to pay for it. So, yeah. 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 Okay. And another comment here from Ran that um, had some great success years ago, but not really a good solution anymore. Um, all right. I'll let you get back to demo. Thanks for humoring my questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with the advanced form block, I'm in a page. I can still, um, I can edit this form. And then if I go back out and grab the actual form, I can switch which form is loaded here. So it makes it really clean and easy to like, you know, switch the form out. If you're like wanting to test on a page, you don't have to delete and re-add the block. The block can switch through which form. And so you've got some new submit actions. Um, we added uh, support for convert kit and active campaign um, in this version, which was like our two most sought after. And then there's this newer option to hide the form after submit. So by default, well, here we'll just publish this and uh, view. <clears throat> um, by default, when you submit, you'll get a success message and the form will be emptied out. If there's an error, the form will stay full. That... Um, that is effective. Some people really like the form to just be hidden after submit so that there's like absolutely zero confusion um, when you finish it. So this, um, this just lets you do that now, which is a new setting. And then it'll just hide the whole form once it's done. Um, Am I? Oh, sorry. You're you got to help me out here. Oh, I yeah. just noticed that I was opening a tab and not uh, showing what was happening. Hmm. So here I am talking, thinking you can see what I can see, but I've got two tabs open and I'm apparently only showing uh. one. So I will refrain from opening new tabs. <laughs> and that whole demo I just did was not visible to anybody. Uh, yeah. Hopefully that makes sense though. Yeah. It does. So funny. Yeah. I, I mean, can't believe it, it. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It does make sense because I mean, it is a thing where people see the form again and it's like, well, did anything happen? Did it, did my form? And sometimes they don't mm -hmm. see the success message. So it's definitely a nice user um, yes. experience to know that the form went away and then that the only thing that they would be seeing then is a success message. Um, it's just another visual cue that they got that, that, that the action they took was successful. Yeah, exactly. Um, hmm. And we've added a lot more controls into this version. So if you like add a checkbox field, And you want to use this. So by default, the core, the browser checkbox is colored by the browser. And we kind of went away from that by allowing the checkbox to actually be edited. So if I go in here and set the background and this will look really ugly, but it'll be a good example. Um, my input field background, I can do a gradient or a solid color. You can see that the background of the checkbox actually changes, which um, just allows you to do one better styling if you're doing like border control and stuff. But also yeah. if you create a form and um, you want it to be dark, this now looks a whole lot better when you're doing fields like checkbox because the yeah it automatically inherits the styling so then here, we'll get this and i'm goodness i gotta figure out how to not open a new tab when i do that how do i <laughs> 
there's a different way of sharing your your browser rather than sharing when you go to present share just share the whole windows something share the whole window instead mm -hmm. of the chrome tab yeah but anyway that's an example of how this can be different um yeah. and look a little bit nicer because you get some custom styling and this will work with the radio buttons as well uh so yeah dark background is like taken care of in this and that's like a huge thing um let me see one thing we did um i'll just get rid of this is add some new label styles so if you go into the label setting there's normal which is like the label is going to be over the input field we have in field which is like a, a cool style and then we have floating which then bumps that up and all of these are accessible and built for accessibility um so it's just kind of comes down to your preference there's some accessibility experts that will tell you floating isn't the best for your users because there's movement and anytime there's movement that can throw people off so i wouldn't say it's like hey you should do this on forums but there's certainly a lot of people that requested this as being something that they would could be able to do in their forums and so it's a pretty cool and quick way to do that i personally tend to gravitate toward the infield especially because you can put a placeholder in all of these um hmm. fields with just doing your field placeholder so we have added options for default value and you can enable dynamic default values so if you want to pull in the uh, email of the um, current user you can so that email will get auto filled so um, nice if they're logged in so if you've got a form like behind a login page or something like that you can auto fill it with with user data and then we also added some options for um, you can populate fields with a parameter. So in a URL, if you want to have like uh, a query parameter of name equals, you know, something, you could pre-fill out a form just based on the URL that you click on. And you can do that with the populate with parameter field. So. My idea with that one is you know how there's UTM codes and all the marketers are using their UTM codes. So you, you could use a hidden field with your UTM codes and then actually be able to like track what campaigns. And yep. so then that information gets like stored. So you can say, oh, well, this form was filled out because of this campaign because you're you're taking those parameters and hiding hide, using hidden fields in order to do that with your forms. So that was my like, ooh, this is really cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can drop in a hidden field hmm. and then in the extra settings, populate with parameter here. And then when that form gets filled out, if that parameter was there, it would automatically be populated. That's so, so cool. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool way to so just cool. like see how how good, you know, even like a, you know, a tweet is or whatever. Um, you can see just by putting like, check out this page, see who comes from what source and things mm -hmm. like that. <clears throat> um so uh image selection we do have a uh, file upload conditional logic is coming so we in the advanced fields you have file upload here um let's see if i can show this Keep having to switch tabs here. Um, I didn't give it a label either. So yeah, you can choose a file and you can do file upload. How this works is it stores into a custom folder in your uploads folder. So it's not connected to the media library. That's for security uh, reasons. So then the URL then gets appended on the email if you're doing that or saved in the, the URL to where that file is located. And you have some settings for that. Um, as far as like which you max upload and all that kind of stuff on the, the file thing. 
Conditional logic is one we're working on next. So I think right now our current plan is conditional logic first, and then we'll do um, <clears throat> integrations. I wonder if that's something with some other third party service. Um, I'd be curious for more might... clarity on that. Yeah, I think Sue was talking about like, can you, like if you do a file upload, is there a way to connect it to like a Google Drive or to a Dropbox or something like that where you have a file storage and you can say, okay, it's it's integrated. And so you have like a client upload area and you want um, all of your client files to go to one specific area in a Dropbox or something like that. Yeah. I haven't seen any requests for that, but that seems reasonable and wouldn't, wouldn't be hard to implement at all. Um given that all of those have APIs. So yeah. yeah, that seems totally reasonable to to do something like that rather than it being stored um, on your, your website server. Um, but yeah, so conditional fields next and then multi-step. There you go. <laughs> Kathy does read minds. <laughs> yeah, your superpower. Only Sue's, only Sue's. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, and then see. where do people go get their, like, so they have uploaded files, let's say they're doing a job application and there's resumes. Where do people go find those? Yeah. So that's all going to be based on what your submit actions are. So if you're sending an email, that's going to be mm -hmm. in the email. There's going to be a link to that file. If you're saving it in the database, then it's going to be in the database entry as well. And we've moved entries to be a little bit more prominent. So you could always go to form entries here and see your entries. Um, and now when you're in all forms, you can actually see like, hey, this one has two entries. So I can click on that and see those entries. So if you've got like thousands of entries, it's a little bit easier to see which entries are coming in from which form. And then you've got the ability to export entries for a specific form or things like that. And yeah, once you view these, we show the first two fields in the list view, but then once you view it, you get the details and then any other fields that are available. Nice. Okay. Um, can we go back to when we're showing the dynamic content and how it can get pulled into forms? Like when you showed like the user's email, um, I was playing with it on one of my test sites and I was able to connect into um, some of my ACF stuff with my yeah. custom websites. So this question, pulling in list options or like checkbox op options, we don't support yet for like the select box field okay. um we're just setting the default value which means that like in your select box if you wanted a dynamic like let's say i've got three options there and i want one of those to be based like i want the the default to be based on an advanced custom field from the user for example, like I've got them to fill out something else and save that, then you could do that and it would be the one that's selected. Um, but that's just for the default value. We don't have a way to do like dynamic select fields yet. And some of that is because I don't know how useful that would be. Um, I mean, there's always people who are doing something, but it's like you can just make your, your fields here so yeah, that'll be one. I'd love to see use cases as to like exactly how okay. people want that to work because then it would be cool to implement something like that. But yeah, for the select fields, you're just doing, you know, your own options and you can add options and set the values at the label. Okay. Cool. I'm going to throw this on the screen just because I'm not going to pronounce your name right, but I saw your conversation in Facebook. Uh, Vokhyan? Am I saying that right? Gosh, I don't. Why did I even try? Now I'm just embarrassed. 
your name wrong. <laughs> so the conversation that you guys were having, I actually screenshotted that and put that into the team channel so that they could get some eyeballs on that because I know that that is a concern and we want to solve that for you. So I am advocating for that on, on the inside for you. So I just wanted to highlight that. We hear yeah. you. So we have actually been working with an outside of Cadence um, UI designer. I've been meeting with him basically every two weeks for the last, gosh, wow now. It's been three months. We're trying to figure out how to do advanced navigation because what Core has come up with is lacking, to say the least. So the issue with why isn't the advanced nav or why isn't the course navigation block dynamic? Like if you update the menu in your menus page, it won't update that block. And that's because they made the block to be static. Why? I have no idea. I messaged on Twitter at one point and one of the lead devs in Gutenberg was like, yeah, that's an issue. Why are we doing that? And it's just one of those things where somebody somewhere thinks it's a good idea and uh, I don't, I don't know why it's not being challenged, but I, I, in general, I think the the main thing is that the appearance menus page is on the list of pages to get cut, to get taken out of WordPress eventually, and so managing something from there is probably why they're saying we don't need to make this connection because this is going away eventually. Okay. Um, but yeah. We're looking at advanced navigation. We're really trying to get the UI figured out because it's really hard to build the product, build the block and everything without really understanding how we want that UI to work. And mm -hmm. we all don't like Core's UI <laughs> for advanced navigation, especially because you can't do anything advanced in it like mega yeah. menus and stuff like that. So we're trying to figure out what is the like, what is the right UI? And Navigation is tricky and there's a lot to it. I mean, even if you look at like cadences, the theme and all of the like advanced, like you can just keep diving into certain areas and find this pop up with all these advanced settings and styling and all that. And so we're trying to figure that out in a way that's not so overwhelming in, inside the block editor, but still like really lets you manage navigation as a list. And so like I can say like our current mock-ups have us doing like two essentially two different ways to look at your menu depending on what you're trying to do so we will have like the menu block or the navigation block and then you'll like be able to say like well i want to like edit the architecture the structure and then you'll see it in the list view you can drag things around easily and manage it there but not in the tiny sidebar like core um, and then have like in that interface drop down for things like descriptions and adding icons and all that stuff. And then have like a normal view where you're seeing it more like your customers do, where you're really more focused on styling. So, um, yeah, that's in the works. Uh, and hopefully, um, <clears throat> so, yeah, well, lots to do. I think that and part of that is it's just where you're updating it from. If you're using mm -hmm. an element, put in navigation and you have to update that inside the element and not inside the menus page. And that's just because of how core made it. Okay. Cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Little little sidebar there, but let's get back to talking about the form block. And I, I know it's happening. This is gonna happen soon with these forms, isn't it? It is, yeah. We started yeah. marking out the plan for uh stripe certainly paypal is a bit more to handle we're gonna get there um but stripe will be like mm -hmm. like i told you already we're doing conditional fields multi-step stripe would be the next one okay <laughs> cool. <clears throat> that's um... the hope is that we can create a form block that really allows you to work inside the editor and you don't need to leave the editor experience. It feels very native, uh, but you still get all the benefits of having a form block. Like, hey, I just want to go manage my form somewhere, or I just want to see the entries. You're not trying to figure out which page you put it in or things like that. Cool. Pull the data mm -hmm. from form fields in a post. Kathy, explain that. Um, <laughs> all right. 
<laughs> Sally's cat blog. She's got, okay. she really needs to get all of the cats in the whole world adopted. So she's got her custom post type for cats, right? And she just can't keep up with all of it. And she's got all of her friends who are like trying to get cats adopted. So she wants to give them not WP admin access, but she wants to give them a form where they can submit a cat and it would then be displayed as a custom post type item. Possible? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's in the works. Um, same with <laughs> collecting testimonials would be another way. Yeah. Like if you wanted to use testimonials or staff as like a custom post type, then that would be another use case for that. Yeah, that's in the works. Um, Amazing. Mapping, the trick there is just mapping to the ACF fields. But if you're using <laughs> ACF or Metabox, whatever, it's one thing to do like a title and description. It's another to be like, yeah, and I want to have like these go into custom fields. But that's... That's very much planned, yeah. Uh, I see some people awesome. who are either very excited about getting cats adopted or all of these fun <laughs> forms. I think yeah. this is uh, this is very awesome. What about a front end entry view for logged in users? Possible to do that. So you have like a logged in user, but maybe they have just maybe subscriber level, or maybe maybe it's an ad well admins you. But some some kind of um, user level that you just don't want them to have access to like anything on the back end, but you want them to be able to put in data. They're logged in customers, customers, WooCommerce customers that um, have very specific instructions that need to be that you're selling T-shirts and they're going to be customized and they need to be able to type in all of the customizations and you that doesn't exist for WooCommerce. I don't know. I'm seeing this as more like if you go back to your um, interesting signal support emails. Hmm. Um, Are we putting Zendesk I, out of business? <laughs> I, yeah, I think yeah. I would want to see a, like a details of like use case for that and how you want to use it. Um, I can definitely see like if you've got a cat blog that's doing adoptions and you want to show which ones you've entered, like I've put in four cats to get adopted and I want to see those like entries on the front mm -hmm. end. I can see that. Okay. It definitely can be built as far as native inside of K. It's like one of those things where it, it might be niche enough that like somebody does that add on, but I'd, yeah, I'd like to see the use cases and understand. Okay. <laughs> always welcome, right? Michelle's always got good ideas. That's yes. Amazing. Yes. Okay. Well, let's get back to um to some more demos. I'm sure there's more that you would like to to show because we also have some other stuff in three one that's beyond the form, um, and I want to make sure we have time for that too. Yes. Um. So let's add a row here. One thing we did with 3.1, and I'm going to show this by typing here, is that the way that you search for a block inside of um, Gutenberg is it is kind of, can be frustrating when you're like, okay, like for example, I want image, I want the advanced image block. Previously, the advanced image block would just not show up when you typed image, and the reason was because we titled it advanced image block. And the way that um, core handles search results uh, is kind of funny. One, they prioritize all their own blocks. And it's obviously you can't game this because then every plugin author would be like, all my, all my blocks are going to be first. So core is always going to sh like be first when you're searching. Uh, and then it, it equally, like it treats title and keywords and description equally. So we were coming to an issue where it was like really annoying to try to get like the advanced text block if you're typing text or the advanced image block to show up. So we ended up renaming these blocks uh, and putting advanced next to it. And it's the same with form and gallery and things like that, just to make it a lot easier uh, to find these blocks when you're doing a search. So I just wanted to briefly show that. Uh, a new block that's also coming is the progress bar block. 
So this allows you to create a graphic that just shows some kind of progress. Um, this is seen in a lot of block plugins and page builders and things like that. And it's mostly just used for making things more interesting when you're telling a story, especially with numbers. Uh, and we've got some different styles. So you can do a circle and you can do a half um, circle. You can change your progress and you can change the max progress. You can change your thickness. You've got that. all the, the settings. You've even got some different animation settings um, and duration and then alignment for text and where the text is going to go, like if it should go below and if you want the label to be before or after, or if you want um, it to be, uh, let's see, like above and below. You've got all that kind of stuff and colorings and everything else. So that's come. And while we're here, there's a tiny little thing. This came up in the Facebook group. People were wanting the gradient picker to have control point position um, where you can manually set that. So we added that. So yes, you can still drag, but now if you want to manually set it, you can. Um, that's a, just a tiny little thing that came in three. Um, and then in list view, if you want to organize your page, we, we did some stuff to make that a little bit easier. So the advanced text, if you'll watch, um, when you write something, it then automatically changes that title here to um, look at what's in your text so it's easier to navigate. And if you wanna go in and rename these, <clears throat> uh, you can now. So you can say, I want this block to be called, uh column two and that will save uh in the page so you can just give yourself some better structure um when you're looking at list view if you're like hey i just want my sections to have names so when i'm looking at list view i can have a long page or whatever and i can know what what section i'm in you can now do that with all the blocks um so rename here and rename here Nice. And I mean, that, that would be 3.1. Like, that would be enough for me. <laughs> that is such an amazing yeah. feature. Uh, yeah. So nice. Yep. And then behind the hood, um, we, um, yeah, and just we'll show, like, the info box. Um is going to, let's see, it's a box. Other block do where it makes sense. Oh, I can't think of it off the top of my head. We did another block where we auto put the title in, just like in its text block, but now I can't think of what it is. Um, but one thing behind the hood uh, that we did is all blocks now have a unique ID that's like, um, so that is it's a tiny like thing that isn't going to really affect most people. But what essentially could have happened previously is if you had elements and you duplicated an element and you put them both on the same page, like you output them to the same page, it was possible that the block unique IDs would be the same as they were duplicated and it wasn't a site-wide unique ID. We had a structure that just to like make sure it's a unique ID within the page, but especially as we're getting uh, broader. Thank you, Josh. Hey, look, one of our lead devs is listening to Grant. <laughs> and um, he's actually I the one that. who really made all of this happen. So there you go, Josh. This is all on uh, him to get the rewriting, renaming done. <clears throat> so there you go. That's the other block. Good job, Josh. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Josh is yeah. amazing. Josh is totally amazing. So <clears throat> anyway, the this like the least important, least exciting feature 
is one that for us is really nice, and that is the site wide unique ID because it prevents any kind of conflict when you're using the um, you know, conversion with an element and you've copied things over or you've pasted things in from the design library, which is, by the way, getting more and more massive every, um, every day. So you should definitely check out all that we're doing there. Uh, that solves that in a really great way. So yeah, that is the updates for 3.1. Amazing. Anything else I should talk about? Um, we have a bunch of questions if you are yeah. okay taking some questions. I have the people yeah. are um, here. The people <laughs> are here. Yes. So let's just start. I've got them started from the beginning. So we'll just start going through them. So Christy wants to know a simple block theme since WordPress 6.3 has many changes specific for this type of theme. Thoughts? Yeah. So what it comes down to is this. The the full site editing, and I'm using quotes here because that doesn't really mean anything, but the new way in which core is pursuing themes where you're using the site builder instead of or the site editor instead of the customizer is extremely limiting in core ways. So we'll go back to the navigation block as being one of the main things that really stop you in your tracks. If you want to build any kind of an interesting header like transparent header, sticky header, all that stuff. It just can't be done right now. If you want a logo to be centered on desktop and left aligned on mobile, just there isn't a setup for all of that kind of stuff in the current way in which full site editing works because full site editing is using Gutenberg to power headers and footers, which is fine if you have a very simple header and footer, but if you're doing anything complicated, it can be especially for the headers, it can be really limiting. Along with that, WordPress WooCommerce just now finally released blocks that will be used inside of the header. Like, you know, one of the things that if you were doing a WooCommerce store and you wanted to have the cart in your header, that wasn't really possible for full set editing theme. Now, finally, WooCommerce is catching up. So we've been holding off, holding off, holding off to see where some of this stuff lands and what problems we would need to solve to actually create equal feature parity with full site editing and the current way in which we do themes, which is the customizer and things like that. At the risk, and I understand at the risk of feeling like we'll be late to the game, I've been like, we shouldn't get in and get stuck in having to support something when we want to build, when we actually want to build something different. And what that doesn't even cover is like all the dynamic options that you think about, not to mention the way that like templates are handled inside of full set editing is annoying and tricky. And you can't do simple things like turn off my sidebar for a page. You've got to go in and edit the template and change it. So we've been holding off on creating a block based theme. Um, I know one of our main competitors has released one and that's um, I don't feel like we are going to just release one to release one. Um, I think, frankly, if you just want to use one, use the course 2023. Like it's fine. Um, <clears throat> they're all basically the same and no one's innovating right now because right now the whole space is lockdown and so what we're going to try to solve first is the advanced navigation and then what i'm hoping to be able to accomplish assuming we can get pushed into work is that we'll be able to literally use the theme that if you want to so just full, full setting mode and then you have the editor and stuff like that so we're really looking to figure we need to, it to make that experience actually to what we currently have in the customizer. And I build a lot of websites. I work on this all the time. If I'm going to build a website, I'm using Cadence because I, I want the header builder, not because like there's nothing in full site editing that I think is all that great. It's cool and it's exciting and I get it. And there's some really slick animations now and that's exciting and fun. But if you go and try it 
on a serious website, most likely you're going to come right back to be like, actually, I want to manage my header in the customizer because this is so much easier. And so what we're trying to figure out is we know it's the future. One, we need to make sure we get everyone that's using Cadence supported and able to move when they want to move, if they want to move. So that's one. And then two, I don't want to release something that is severely inferior. I don't know if that's all I'm saying too many words. If it, that's just inferior to what the current experience is. Right. And so that's why we've been holding off. Um, it, are we working on it? Are we thinking about it? Yes. We're trying to solve for the problems that it, yes. We're trying to solve for advanced navigation. We're trying to solve for advanced headers. Those would be the two biggest areas. And then we're trying to figure out how does dynamic settings work within the block templating system? How could we give you a setting that said, enable a sidebar for my blog posts or disable a sidebar for my blog posts without you having to go in and know how to edit a template and change whether or not the sidebar is there or which side of the page it's on. The same with like box layout and all that stuff and i definitely can like have times where i'm like you know this is exciting we should be jumping in just to jump in and then i go no this isn't what we want to do we want to make sure we do it right so that's a long answer sorry it is I but i sure. think it's important and i think <laughs> i think yeah, it underscores the value of where <laughs> we're put putting our values our values are helping people create more effective sites. And yes, there's all this other stuff happening, but if we're not focused on our customers and what they're trying to do today and creating more effective sites that are easier, faster to develop and, and really stay focused on that mission, if we try to veer off and like, oh, well, let's see what wind is blowing this way. Do we want to go that way? Is that going to be the future? It's going to take us off of our mission of serving our customers. And so I really appreciate the time you know, the fact that you took some time to answer that question, but also what yeah. it's underscoring in terms of our values. So my two cents. <laughs> Thanks. Let's go speed round. Um, we are going to add multi-step with selection for forms, right? That's coming. Multi-step. Yes. Image select. Um... Click. Click. Once on an image and set field and go to the I'll have to screen. just see that's like there'll be a button to say like next. So I'll have to just see what that means. Maybe some other plugins doing it and I go figure out what they're doing or like what the use case on that is. Okay. Sounds like once you finish filling out the page, it automatically jumps to the next, which we would be looking at doing. Kind of maybe similar. like like how Typeform works. Typeform is really elegant in terms of like you. Can oh, like con conversational, like more style, like one thing you hit it, you finish it, moves to the next. Yeah, it's so fun. Really it's so pretty. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. it is. Um, this question might be a little bit long. With the new advanced form block allowing us to add additional class or ID, unique parameters, which will help devs code better because they have some heavy scripting in JavaScript that they have to point to field by data label or any other HTML element parameters, which doesn't give them control over future changes. That's pretty complex. I don't know. I think the main thing is, can fields have a custom ID? Yes. You have okay. control over the ID. Previously, the ID, because the field was an array of items inside of a static block, so the ID was set based on the um, where it came in the array, and now you just have full control. You can set the ID to be whatever you want because it's okay. a different block entirely. Yeah. Cool. Um, we do have, we're, we do support ACF and, and Metabox. Yeah. And pods we, and. And pods. We don't do croc block jet engine or the other one is um, types. Uh, what's that? Type. Can type. I think? It has a type you know in the name. Yeah. I know which one you're talking not? about. I'm going blank. I am too. Um, yeah. 
I'm curious to see how many people, I feel like if you're using either of those two plugins, you're probably on a totally different system than Cadence. Yeah. Any API? Yes, on- there is. You can do it in the old one too. There's a, a hook and a filter. Perfect. Um, progress bar, dynamic. I believe I saw that that's in there, isn't it? That you can pull from. Josh would have to answer that one. Let me see. I don't I... think we have an option to, to set the progress to be dynamic at this time. Okay. Feature request. But there you go. Yeah. 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 Gradient picker, just decimal values? I don't know the use case for decimal values, but okay. we could make it support decimal values. You can set the values to be the same as a different one. Okay. Um, Chris Josh says this. we don't have <laughs> I wish that were the case. Oops, wrong one. Yes. Josh, Josh says. Not yet. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Tool set. Tool set. Why was I thinking types? Yeah, yeah. Tool set types is, yeah. Anyway, that's the other one that we don't support at this point, aren't planning on doing them or um, Jet Engine. Okay. And Cadence is worth every dollar spent, especially <laughs> if you buy during our stellar sale, which is happening yeah. right now. If you head over to cadencewp.com, the essentials bundle and the full bundle are on sale. And if you don't know if you need the essentials bundle or the full bundle, I did some thinking on that this week and I talked about my favorite pro features. So if you head over to the Cadence blog, I wrote the things that I appreciate the most in Cadence Pro um, and then all the features that are different in the essentials bundle and then what you get if you go full bundle. So if you are not yet a paying customer, we miss you. Join the party. All those coupons are auto applied. So yep. there's my and it there's- works to upgrade too. If you're upgrading from Cadence Blocks to Essential Bundle, you'll get the discount. Yes, yes, awesome, amazing. And if you're going to renew early, let's say you just bought and you're like, all right, I love this product and I just want to tack on another year and save thirty percent on that. Boom, renewing early works as well. And more Cohen says that. Uh, updated early during the sale and would have done so even look at that and more you have a really interesting post if you guys are not in the facebook community go look at more's um there's a course there's i'm i just yes thank you it's a design course It looks so good, doesn't it? I yeah, wanna, I it honestly look looks this. beautiful. She was like, can I post this? I was like, oh my gosh, yes, post it yesterday. It looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so awesome. Um, so cool. Um, Sue, so iThemes users to get Cadence support login. So there's going to be solutions yes. here. We're aware we're, of this. We're aware of this in like the next three months anyone on iThemes is we're going to migrate you to a cadence account and make it all work for you. Thank you. And thank you to everybody who brings us issues and brings us like, you know, WordPress is annoying me. Help me fix this. Or Mm -hmm. cadence, you're annoying me. Help me fix this. We we really are here to, to help you do better and help. If we're not missing, or if we're not making the mark, if we're missing the mark with you, we want to know about it so we can do better. If WordPress is not making the mark, then we want to help find a way to to get there faster while Core gets their stuff together. We're, we're here to really serve you in any way possible. So thank you to everyone who shows up to these live streams, shares your mm-hmm. questions, shares your frustrations, shares your excitement. I, this is one of the most exciting products I've ever been able to work on, and it makes me super, super excited to to do fun stuff with uh, Ben, Hannah, and the rest of the Cadence team. Um, anything that people should be looking for for the future? Do you want to, like, tease something? I know there's some stuff that's happening. I'm not going to yeah. say it, but I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I... We definitely want to hear that flex question is interesting. We want to hear where advanced users want more flex control, especially when it comes to like 
the section block and how you want to do things like we need to you know we need to know we added flex basis which is like a pretty advanced way of thinking about flex to the latest release uh so yeah if you have a specific thing you're like i can't do this and i wish i could we want to know so we can understand how to better provide those flex options inside of um the the editor uh as far as new things like uh, we've talked about this a lot we're working a lot on ai that's coming um that is um yeah it's a huge project but we're hoping very quickly to start doing some beta testing where we actually hand off a plugin um and that i'm pretty excited about the future of that there's going to be multiple phases and it's going to be like one thing at a time but once we get that done it'll look like uh ai in your design library ai inside of the advanced text block and ai to actually build the entire starter template if you want to start from scratch so we're kind of figuring out that whole dynamic of how ai is going to interact with with cadence uh, all the way back up. We're working on the advanced query block. You can, Josh, who's apparently listening to me is currently uh, also working on that right now. Um, and that's going to have like advanced filtering and things like that. Um, the repeater block, we should have that in beta in like a week. Um, the That's coming really soon, right? You know, we're we've already been doing a lot of internal testing with that um more mobile layout control i guess i would want to know what that means uh, maybe different screen size control like more than just tablet and mobile that'd be I good don't... something good ash that you could write in about and talk about your specific issues that you're facing yep. there so that we can address that um yeah i'd like to know that for sure um I would go with like design libraries, create your own design library with Cadence Cloud for, for this particular question if you're doing Well, of... this is, this is I think this is more um, global styles, which we are. Okay. Like global styles will be a thing where you'll be able to say like, I want to style this block and then I want to say, hey, this is a global style and we'll store that style as far as like how it's rendered in CSS. And then you could apply that to other blocks and then update it globally. So yeah, that's something we're, um, we're working to solve that's not as close as some of the other things we've talked about um, like we're pretty into the advanced query block that's going to come first the repeater blocks coming we're going to get a better version out of that soon um, and then uh, pexels integration um, that's something really exciting that's coming up which is the ability to drop in images from pexels that are already size you're not having to go to pexels find an image download it resize it upload it um so that'll be a search built right into the media library which of course you will be able to disable uh, if you want to so that's that's coming pretty close to lots of stuff lots of stuff advanced lots of navigation stuff. have i mentioned that uh <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> yeah. doesn't end very, and new licensing too. That's another big one we've been trying to figure out is all yeah. the friction around our licensing is about to go away once we get this new system out. So auto activations with OAuth authentication and yeah, it's going to be sweet. Amazing. So awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to pitch the sale again. Because that's what I am here to do. 30% off essentials are the full bundle. Go get your cadence on, folks. And because we're part of this organization, you know, Liquid Web and Stellar WP and everything, are some of our sister brands like Learn Dash, Events Calendar, Give WP, iThemes, and iTheme Security Pro, um, Orderable, Iconic. There are so many other brands that are kind of like our sister mm -hmm. brands. If you buy Cadence and you get the 30% off there, you'll get an email that'll give you a coupon with 40% off any of those other brands. And that's hot stuff right there because some yeah. of the pro features with like events calendar and with learn dash totally. there is some major 
major functionality there. So you'll want to jump on that. So all of the details are up on that. Just go to cadencewp.com, click on the banner at the top, and it'll take you to all of the details with that stellar sale. So you can, and, and then you'll have Cadence in your tool set, ready to go when this all drops on Tuesday. 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 3.1. Yep. <clears throat> Very exciting. Yay. All right. Um, all right. I guess that's it. I guess we're, we're going to wrap it up. Any final thoughts? Yeah. Looks like there's more questions. You guys can just ask them in the Facebook group and we'll try and like be active in there the rest of the day. And, um, yeah, going forward so that you can, we can get to all of those. I hate to like leave questions unanswered, but also we do need to end this. So <laughs> keep the conversation going in our Facebook group. Yeah, definitely. I'll post definitely a link to it in case anybody is not a part of it. Amazing. Yeah. And then that way, if there's like, we need further information to understand what it is that you're trying to solve yeah. for or what problem that you're having, um, we can get that, that information for you. So yeah, very, very exciting. Thank you guys, everybody. Thank everyone for being here. Ben and Hannah, thank you for coming down from the mountaintops <laughs> so that... Uh, so that we could have this lovely live stream in the middle of this stellar sale and make sure that everybody is prepared for what's going to be hitting their dashboards on Tuesday. So, and Sue, I will see you in DC. I got my ticket. I got my airline ticket. I got my hotel. I am going to WordCamp US. So anybody else is going to WordCamp US, hit me so up, fun. Kathy at Cadence WP. I want to have like a little Cadence rumble in the hallways in the hallway track so very nice we'll be there i'm excited yeah. you guys are going to the beach mountains to the yeah. beach <laughs> yeah word camp fell the wrong i love word camps though yeah, yeah i do too the party is at the smithsonian oh, party so at fun. the smithsonian wow that's cool so yeah. That'll be really so, fun. Shoot. Yeah. It's Next be year. a good time. Awesome. We're going to crash your server. <laughs> Chris, going to crash the servers on Tuesday. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's going to be great. All right, guys. That's awesome. We'll wrap it up and we will see it. We'll have another live stream again. These are so fun. It is so nice that you guys yeah. bring all your questions and we have a chance to really like talk through some of this stuff and, and show you what's going on. So thank you for being part of the cadence community. Yeah. We will uh, see you next time. Yeah. See ya. Bye.